I'm excited. Uh, <laughs> look at this. Okay, so so far we have um, with Troy. Yes. Holly, Chloe, who I know, uh, and Chloe, you came. How nice to see you in person. And you know, I. I <laughs> that I'm excited to tell you uh, I finally got. I got uh, what you sent me and it's wonderful. Ooh, I, hope, I hope you publish this. We have to talk about it because it's remarkable. Chloe is an amazing artist. I don't know, you can find her paintings online and she's right now uh, illustrating the work of a very dear friend who is a poet. It's beautiful work. So um, awesome. yeah, yeah. Uh Chloe, if you want to leave a link of any kind in the chat for us to go check out your work, definitely yeah. feel free to do that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's remarkable. We'll do that in the chat. Thank you, Emil. I'm like dying inside in happiness from what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's it. that's good. I like that kind of undeadness. I'm dying inside in happiness. That's, that's what yeah. we all need to do, isn't it? That's mm -hmm. the right answer. Uh, yeah, I love that. Um, and Holly, so I said hi to you. You have a gorgeous Christmas tree, which I, I think is fantastic. It looks like a weapon, really. I mean, it's, it's just <laughs> one of those metal ones, right? Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. And it's spinning. Yep. Cool. Wow. That's just like a giant cat toy. I mean, it would be, <laughs> uh, that's, yeah, that's, it's fantastic, though. Uh, <laughs> oh. And Karen, hello. I think Karen has no audio. So we can't hear from her, but she's there. And, 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 Emil, if I may interrupt just briefly for you there, I know we've got like about five minutes or so till okay. like we formally start the meeting and everything. Okay. Uh, so I'm just like saying like, you know, everybody can just hang out and chat or sit here right. quietly or whatever they want. Uh, but I figured they might want to log in, you know, to be uh, prompt early attendees and stuff. And then at 6.30 sure. there, we'll, you know, I'll, I'll start lobbing some questions at you here and we'll, we'll see what the heck we can talk about tonight. Oh, I love uh, that idea. Um, well, yeah. I definitely want to talk about ghosts. <laughs> I know, I've been it's telling people that. Yeah, it's something that you know a lot about and <laughs> um, <clears throat> I don't know, yeah. Heck yeah, but I, I've got some good, I, well, I hope I have some good questions for you here that you haven't, you know, heard a gazillion times already. Oh, and I, um, if I have. It'll be the first time I've heard it from you, so it'll be good. Can you hear me okay? Because yeah, I think I, I, I could someday buy a microphone. I'm just using the the uh, audio in my computer, and I'm not so sure it's fabulous. So. No, you're doing okay by me. Am I doing okay? So, Let me yeah. just, the yeah. Hazari here, the craziness. There, <laughs> we just, that's a little better. Um, Lucas, hi. Hi, Lucas. I, um, he's frozen. Everybody's frozen. Oh, no. Nope. I can hear you okay. What happened here? I'm not sure, Emil. Mm. Wow. Okay, this is bad. Uh, well, Emil, your 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 image just went away, but uh, your audio is still here. <clears throat> okay, you're back now. Uh, hey, Chloe, are you there yet? Yeah. Oh, What's good. That? Yeah. Well, I, I did just. I did, hello. <laughs> I, I, I did just pull up your Instagram and 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 do recall seeing you uh, follow me this week. And that is some beautiful work you got there. Those are. Oh, thank you. Really darn nice paintings. Yeah. Those. Those, those, those are fantastic. So, yeah. I'm all the more even happy it. that you're here. So, yeah. So that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm super excited to be here. <laughs> Especially so, if we get to share ghost stories. I, well, I'm I'm excited to hear what people have to share. You know, <laughs> so it be kind of neat. Honey, don't. Um, <laughs> you know, since since I've got you in, in in the spotlight for the moment here, Chloe, can can you mm -hmm. tell us here a little bit about yourself? Like, what like what kind of painter, illustrator, what cr kind of creative are you? Um, well, I, I'm a, I'm a painter and I'm an educator. I, I, uh, I'm in Los Angeles and I, I teach, um, like college level painting classes and I have a bunch of, that's a donut painting demo that I did the other day. Uh, let's see. Hush. Hush, hush, hush. I can take you around a little bit. Um, I have... I have stacks of paintings in a very messy studio right now. 
but um, let's see, flip my camera. These are some paintings I'm working on. Um, it's part of a whole series. They're all responses to poetry. So that's my jam. Crispy. Crispy, Crispy. honey. Very, very cool, Chloe. Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay, I'm just doing a little bit of admin end work over here. Then no hopefully, hopefully we'll get started pretty soon here. I see Steve Kasher. Hello, Steve. Nice to see you. I don't think we've ever talked this way, have we? Well, hi, Emil. You've never seen me. I know. I haven't seen you. Live either, so. You what? You're alive. I, well, as far as you know, right? I might be undead. I mean, I, it's I, true. I would love to be undead, actually. This might be coming to us from the past. Or the grave. <laughs> you know, that could be too. Speaking of undead and monsters, I just completed uh, my first, I, I'd never, I, I was familiar with the idea of a concept album, but I'd never read a concept book before. Um, but George, George A. Romero and um, <clears throat> I'm forgetting the other, the other author, uh, they did Knights of the Living Dead, which was, they were, it was an anthology of all short stories set within 48 hours of the original Night of was the Living Dead. Was it Daniel Krauss? Um, no. Mm, I can pull, it, pull it up the other author, but yeah, edited by George A. Romero with uh, at least one story by him in it. It was mm. really fun. If you're a fan of zombies, I highly recommend I'm, I'm a definite fan, uh, although I, I don't, you know, I don't know that I want to converse with them, but I absolutely <laughs> uh, would love to read that. Yeah. I'm a giant fan of George Romero, for sure. Everybody's frozen. Oh, God, no. Let me see if I can make you unfree. If I, again, Emil, your, your, your picture went away, but your audio is still present, so. Are you unfrozen now, everybody? <laughs> uh, yeah. oh, this is bad. We can hear you, Emil. We can all turn off all our sound and cameras and then we'll just leave it. You have other windows open that may be... Uh, like like a YouTube or anything because it still can have a feed that's active even if the video's off. Just an idea. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that suggestion there. All right. Yes. Hey Molly. I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> this no. is bad. That's okay, Emil. We'll, okay. we'll keep working through it. It's all right. You know. We're, 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 we're not going to like end the meeting because you know of this. Obviously, even if you disappeared on us, there's obviously uh, 35 really interesting people here right now. So that's totally true. <laughs> Look at everybody. I'm like enjoying your studio it. looks so amazing. By the nah, way, it's, uh, <laughs> there's, uh, well, you know, I had to make uh, Mama's altar, uh, so I made Mama's altar, and it is uh, it's a, it's a work in progress. It's it's a little insane. Um, because I'm monsterifying relics. Um, and, uh, and so there's this confluence of the monster and the religious, you know, Ooh. the saints and the monsters. And uh, it's taken over. So uh, as you, I mean, I'm sure you understand this, Chloe, because I think uh, you live in that world, you know, where yeah. things, yeah, yeah. Um, yes. And I was, uh, Javier? Um, Jonathan Mayberry, and I read one of his zombie, uh, zombie books, which was a very touching book about a child zombie. Did you read it? I can't remember what it was called. It was fantastic, though. I haven't read that, but he's a comic artist or a comic writer as well, and I have read a few of his comics, um, and his short story in that anthology was particularly good. It was one of the standout ones, so really? uh, I'm, wow. I'm a fan. Yeah, I like his work a lot, too. I really do. Um, I Oh, I was just going to say, you, you mentioned the, your studio and the image behind you, speaking of zombies, zombies, the, the, it looks like a sculpture with the big eye and the face. It's reminding me of um, uh, Attack on Titan, which is the, uh, the giant zombies, the uh, subculture of a subculture. 
Well, I'm, I don't know a lot about Attack on Titan, so I'm going to have to uh, learn about that. You'll, maybe you'll, you'll send me a link to what it is you're talking about. I'm always, uh, I'm learning more about comics than, uh, you know, surprisingly. It's surprising how little I know. I can't see myself anymore, so I don't know. Let me see here. Oh, we can't see, still see you yet. Well, I like that. Oh, yeah, now I get everybody. Oh, look at this. This is wild. And I know Devin. There he is, Devin Whitlock. <laughs> right there. Although his sound is off, so we don't, uh, we don't hear him. There he is. Hi, Devin. How you doing? Hi. Nice to see you. <laughs> Good to see you, too. <laughs> You've got two giant staring eye windows behind you. I like that. It's very <laughs> ominous. <laughs> <laughs> it's really frightening. Good going. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I, I just want to intrude for just a little bit because we're, we're, you know, we're officially at 635. So I think, okay. you know, we, we, could, we sort of can get started a little bit um, yeah. if, if you're all amenable to that and all. We've got about uh, 38 people here right now, which is really, really fantastic. I mean, God, I don't know if you people just don't have anything else to do now or what, but I'm so glad you're no. here. You know, this I'm is... so, that's so freaking great. Look right. at these people. 38 um, creative, intelligent, good-looking people. <laughs> yeah. I even yeah. like when the one I can't is see this their singles faces. night. <laughs> <laughs> I like their name. You know, it's nice. I know some of them and uh, <laughs> this gentleman here, I know. Robert, I know. Yeah, yeah hey. Um, all right. Now, uh -oh. I'm here for you. Uh, anything we want to do, we do. Uh, well, this gentleman, we're... Troy, will tell us, uh, he'll create some rules so that we don't all, uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever well, evil we could do, we don't do. <laughs> well, I, I, well, you know, tonight was supposed to be sort of this kind of idea of a curated conversation. So I've got, you know, some questions that I wanted to, to lob at you. And I do feel that, well, we're, we've all got, you know, obviously a <laughs> show interest here. So I am willing to bet that some of these questions uh, probably will have gone through other people's minds as well. Um, I know that we've got, um, look here. well, we will have time in the evening for people's questions as well. And so we have been asking that if you do have specific questions, feel free to drop them into the chat. And uh, one of my buddies here will sort of keep track of that. So we'll, we'll circle back to those questions at some point. And uh, yeah, it just should be a, a, a neat evening of uh, talking and connecting. Um, before we get started with, with, with the chat with Emil, I did want to sort of turn the focus over to, to my buddy Don tonight, because really, um, in, in a way, this is happening because of Don and, and, and the group that, that he runs with a little bit of my help on Facebook, uh, a group called the Comic Book Panel. And I did see that he already did uh, drop a link to that in, into the chat as well. Oh. Um, Don, if, if you are there, uh, if, if you're so there, Don, could, could you sort yeah. of give us that, that brief hello and uh, introduction to what the comic book panel is but before we get going tonight? <clears throat> sure. Yeah, no problem. Uh, can everybody hear me? Okay. Thumb up. Cool, cool. All right. <laughs> Just real quick, Troy, do, do I have screen sharing? It looks like I don't have screen sharing. Uh, let me see. You, you I don't know if that's something you can toggle. Uh, that is something I can toggle. So let me go to that. And you should be able to do that now. All right, one sec. <laughs> is, is it working, Don? There we go. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, Troy put this together. I'm so glad he reached out to Emil. And Emil, thank you for coming tonight. Oh, yeah, I'm um, glad to. And uh, after eight o'clock, whenever Troy and Emil have wrapped up and we've done. Um, the Emil portion of the night. Uh, we'll have a little trivia game for people who want to stick around uh, based on the 1941 movie, The Wolfman. And we'll be using my quiz, <clears throat> which you can get into pretty easily with your, with a Google account. So we'll talk about the nuts and bolts of that later. Um, just a quick little introduction. 
So we have a nice small Facebook group of 351 members. I've noticed in my experience, any groups that get over a thousand, it gets real nasty. So come join the group that Troy and I have. I think you'll like it a lot better. Um, we are Milwaukee based. We've had monthly meetings since 2009. Um, I'll talk about some of the upcoming meetings real quick. Um, we always end our night with some kind of trivia game that I enjoy putting together. And uh, most of our, our monthly meetings are book based, reading based, but we do have watch parties occasionally. Um, our last meeting in October was about Joe Hill, where we read Joe Hill comics and talked about those. We had a watch party where we watched an interview with Garth Ennis and talked about Preacher and Garth Ennis. And in September, we had a, a theme meeting where the theme was animals. And we just talked about comic book stories about animals. And uh, we usually, we used to meet in person, right? Um, <laughs> and here's one of our meetings at Bounce Milwaukee. So that's a pretty big group until tonight when Troy said the number 35. So, um, so thanks for coming and please join the Facebook group if you use Facebook. Um, sometimes we play trivia, but the last time we met in person, we did not play trivia. We had a Lego building contest where people had to recreate Howard the Duck to the best of their ability. Huh. <laughs> um, coming up, we have a watch party where we're going to check out some Jim Starlin interviews and have Jim Starlin trivia. That's December 7th. Um, our next reading-based meeting will be December 21st, where we'll be talking about money, stories about money. And we have a January watch party set up where we're going to talk um, or watch some short interviews with June Brigman. And uh, we'll have a reading-based meeting in January. Don't know what that is yet. So <clears throat> um, I'll drop another link to the group. Um, I've already seen some people have joined. That's awesome. So let me unshare so Troy can take it away. <laughs> if well, th th thank you so much for that, Don. You know, uh, li like you said, we we've been doing this since like 2009 now. And honest to goodness, it's for, for many of us who are regular attendees, it, it is like the highlight of the month, you know, to uh, so get great. together with some some really great uh, friendly, open-minded, neat people who all have this affection for comic books and sequential art. So it's it's really pretty neat. Um, That's important. Yeah, it's well, it's important to connect with people who you know have those shared interests and all. Yeah, I agree. Um, Beautiful. Oh, good. Well, I'm, I'm glad you all enjoyed there. And um, like I said, if, if you do have questions uh, for a meal tonight, feel free to drop them in the chat. And, and Don's going to be keeping an eye on that chat. And, and keeping a, a, a good record of those questions so we make sure that we get to them. Um, but if it's okay, then yeah, I think uh, I, I'd like to start throwing some of these questions with you here, Emil, if that's all right. And oh, yeah. um, let's, let's talk, because I, I know we've got things to talk about. Um, obviously, everyone who is here tonight, and we're now up to 40 people uh, here. Uh, Hi, people. Thank you. I know. That's so cool. It's very so cool. So honored and so pleased. Um, Everyone who is here is obviously familiar with, with, with your work, you know, and um, or at least as familiar with what we've seen so far and all. And yeah. and so the, what, what, what questions I do have for you kind of, kind of leap around a bit different topics and stuff here. But the first one that I was sort of wondering about for you was, um, I mean, to, to my awareness, you know, uh, my favorite thing is Monsters, you know, was like is, is, is the debut basically for you here. Uh, as, as a graphic novelist and all. And I w was wondering what it is like, or what it was like, you know, from 2017 to now going from this uh, book you spent a number and number of years on to suddenly being the Eisner Award winning uh, person here. Uh, how has that affected your life besides strangers like myself approaching you on Twitter and being like, hey, will you come talk to my, to my, to my friends? Uh, how is life different from now in 2020 from 2017? Well, in 2017, um, I was, uh, the book was just beginning to take off. Um, and uh, I remember going to the Miami um, book fair and uh, being so not aware of how it works when you're an author that I had a bag of pecans 
And a friend of mine, I mean, I was so poor. I was so desperately poor um, that we, we wondered how we were going to eat because we were just holding on. I was just, uh, it was bad. It was very bad. Uh, I was doing cat portraits of people's cats. You know, I was, I was shilling. I was like, oh man, I'm so sorry your cat died. And I was. But you know, I think they look like a historical figure to me. And I think you should maybe have me paint them like that. Which um, was, it, I was like a kind of like a lawyer, like an ambulance chaser for a while. Um, but I love cats, so it was not hard. It's just uh, embarrassing how hard I worked to get those commissions. Um, and uh, so I went to this Miami book fair with a bag of pecans. Uh, and I found out that they actually gave you $100. And we, my friend Kurt Devine and I, who is from Milwaukee, as a matter of fact, uh, he's a Milwaukee boy. And and we were pals and we went together and we just couldn't believe our luck at a hundred dollars to eat for the weekend. It was, um, I mean, we'd been kind of not, not doing great. And, uh, to go financially, there's been a, it's been, a, it's gotten a little better, but, um, the, the most surprising thing was the reception. I mean, more even than finding that I had a hundred dollars to spend on food, was the uh, fact that uh, people really like the book. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, it was pretty personal. There was such an intensely personal quality to the book that I wasn't sure if it would resonate with an awful lot of folks. And it was, it was really a surprise and a wonderful surprise that it did. Um, yeah, I took a big chance with my entire life. You know, I spent years making this thing and I had no idea if anybody would like it or actually I didn't even know if anybody would read it. And when it was, uh, when pirates got it in the Panama Canal, which is one of the adventures of the book, uh, when that happened, I thought maybe I will be the most famous graphic novelist in Panama and that's all that's going to happen and that's cool. Everybody, everybody in Panama will have a copy of my book because there were 10,000 books on the container ship. And I, I mean, I was, you know, it's like, that's so okay. I mean, that it could be all right. I, I but yeah, every, everything has changed in some ways in that. I, I, I'm taking a long time to answer this question, but you know, that's okay. I, I will say to you, if it's gone too long, I'm sorry. When I was a kid, I, I couldn't run and stuff because I had a physical disability. Mm -hmm. So um, there was a day a lot like this when I was a kid. And that was um, because I couldn't run, I started telling ghost stories. And uh, kids would come and they would come to the, the gate, which is a really wrought iron gate. You know, it was kind of, it was kind of gothic. It was an old school in Chicago. And they would come and stand by it to hear the next installment of the ghost story. When it was more than two kids, when it was like six kids, I felt a kind of uh, authorization that changed my life. And this experience is a lot like that. It's, it's suddenly realizing that it's, it's six kids. And that was like, very cool. So you're the six kids and I'm really, thank you. You know, I, I think I'm moved by that. I, I think you said a pretty interesting thing there in that, you know, you, you, you spent years, I mean, we're talking six, seven years, you know, cr creating this book. All it wasn't the, quite that long, but, but yeah. More like about five years then, would you say? You know, I have a hard time figuring out how long it was because there were so many portions of the book that just didn't get used. Okay. That are sort of sitting out there and we'll see what happens with them and, you know, that okay. kind of thing. Well, regardless, we could say a long ass time. It took a very, yeah, very long time to put this together. And so during that whole time where you're working on this, yeah, this intensely, intensely personal thing. And as you just said, you know, then when it did finally come out, you're like, oh my God, people, are, it is resonating with people. They are connecting with the story that I've put so much of myself into. Um, yeah. Could, could you speak at all? Like, um, any highlights of that experience where you like, you know, are recognizing or like any other events that you attended or things where like, Oh my God, all these people are here for, for me. Oh Cause, yeah. Cause they, they like Karen too. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, uh, there were a couple instances like that. Um, <clears throat> I remember being at SPX and, uh, 
I remember, you know, I don't walk very fast. I have a cane, so I walk very, very slow. And I was sort of surrounded by people who were trying to keep me up because if I have to walk a long distance, sometimes I trip or I fall. So um, I was with friends and um, I was just kind of meandering down this extremely long hall in, uh, in uh, Washington, near Washington, DC. And uh, there were all these people lined up. And um, I thought, I really thought, wow, who's here <laughs> that they all want to see? And it was me, you know what I mean? Like that was, uh, I remember just, yeah, like, and I, I kind of wanted to go up to them and say, no, I'm not that cool. Don't wait this long. I don't really, I'm not, I don't have much to tell you. I'm, I'm just like you. I'm so messed up you know, go find somebody cooler. Um, you know, I just, I, I felt very uh, insecure about carrying the weight of this thing. The interview, you can see it, it went well. It was with Michael Kavna of, um, of um, gosh, I forget now, of the Washington Post. Yeah, of the Washington Post. And he's a wonderful um, writer and uh, artist as well. Cartoonist too. And so it was a great interview and it was one of my first and it was a mind blower because it was packed. They actually turned people away um, in mass, like a lot of people. And that was unfortunate, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, okay. yeah, well, thank, thank that was a mind blower. I, yeah. it, it has to be, you know, so, such a rewarding sort of feeling like, oh my God, these people, yeah, are connecting with me. After it's spending... not that rewarding in some ways though, Troy, because, you know, mm -hmm. I freaked out when it happened. I was, I'm a very reclusive person. Right. And uh, it was like, oh my God, I'm responsible to say things to people that I, I don't know. And, and I had this wonderful friend whose name is Bridget Montgomery. She's a psychic in Los Angeles. And she said, you know, you're approaching this wrong. You don't have, you need to think about being a servant. If you're a servant to the people who come to see you, if you bring something to them that you feel they need, then it changes the dynamic. It, it doesn't, it doesn't, it makes it more, it makes it more appealing because you actually feel, mm -hmm. well, if people are coming to hang with me, then I have something to give them, you know, that uh, perhaps is valuable to them. And uh, that is the only way I survive it, to tell you the truth because it's a lot of responsibility and it means that I have to come out of my crazy head and be present in other people's lives. And um, I'm shy, actually, you know? Well, I, I think, you know, so, probably a, a lot of artists, a, a lot of creatives of any kind you are, well, they, they do things that are rather in, introverted, you know, that, uh, that's on their own, you know, in their own space, in their own head. And so, yeah, I, I can't imagine the, the, the pressure that it must feel like to, to, to come out that, that, that way, you know, to have to like reveal yeah. yourself and be like, oh yeah, I'm that person um, in front of all these people. Yeah, so I, I can totally understand how intimidating that, that, that must have felt. It's, it's also easy to stop being yourself, to be who you think people want you to be instead mm. of being who you actually are, which you're always afraid is gonna be so much more boring than they've ever anticipated. And in fact, because you're human, it is more boring. I mean, it's just exactly <laughs> what everybody else is. It's no damn different. Uh, it's just that uh, what you, what I think people come to me and a lot of people over the age of 30 and some under the age of, of 30 mm -hmm. come to me because they say, this is a big work. I mean, you, it was big in size and you know, I want to attempt something, or I'm 55, or I'm 20, and I want to feel like the pressure is off of me, you know, because we, we put so much pressure on people to be successful, to have something great happen. Look at me, I'm 50 uh, million years old, right? Mm -hmm. And it took me all this time. And I, what I like to say to people is the long way home is also a way home. So mm -hmm. relax. It might take a while. It's okay. Uh, t t today, I was uh, working at one of my part-time jobs this morning. And, uh, and while I was doing this, it was like, like piecework type stuff. And so I had my headphones on and I was listening to a couple different interviews uh, w w with you, Emil, just to sort of, you know, see what other people have talked with you about and all. 
And, and I do remember hearing you uh, say something along the lines of, you know, encouraging people, you know, to, uh, that everyone has some sort of story of their own that they have to tell and should tell in the way that suits them and how important it can be uh, that, yes, we all have busy lives and we all have things that we have to do to get by, but at the same point, if you do feel that, that, that urging or that calling to tell a particular story, that it is imperative, you know, as, as, as your role as a human being to carve out time in your life on that daily or regular basis of some sort to work on that thing, even if it's just an hour a day or an hour or two a day, that you've got to make that time and make that space in your life to express whatever that is that's in you that has to come out. Well, there are a lot of people that I'm actually that are here right now. I mean, like Steve is, a, is a very successful. You're both photographers. You don't know that. You and Steve okay. Kasher, okay. Troy, are both photographers. You, you know, I'm thinking of you. Um, I'm thinking of Robert Escobar, who's got books out, fabulous books, many. I'm thinking about a number of my friends here who have created things. Devin, uh, you're an amazing artist and, you know, thinker and Chloe, of course. And I know there are probably others who I haven't identified that I already know, but all of you understand how to make yourselves important to yourself. It's really, it comes down to saying, what I want to bring into the world is really important. And I have a vision of what this thing I'm gonna hold in my hands. You know, um, Steve, you sent me some of your books and these beautiful, glorious books of photographs. And I mean, it was just, it was like looking at the product of somebody's mind when you hold their book in your hand, you know, and I think we can probably all say that we love books. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody who doesn't love books, you have to go. Okay. You gotta go. Bye bye. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. No, I'm kidding, kidding, kidding. Kind of. Um, it's just that, uh, it's just that, you know, we know that we love the product of the imagination. We love this, this, thing that people bring out and we have a culture we're in a culture that is really opposed to that and yet it feeds on that but it it's you know look at twitter you know it just fills your head with a million things our, our social media is about distraction and continual movement it's it's like we're these babies laying in cribs with massive toys just going across our uh, uh, over mm -hmm. and above us and we're in a constant state of hypnosis kind of and uh, I don't have a television you know I say that to people and I think you advertise that today I don't have a tv because I, I wouldn't get anything done mm -hmm. you know I and I would have all those voices hey it's Tony uh hi Tony um uh I, I just I had to get rid of it and I you know I'm glad I did uh yeah well, well you know